Having some technical difficulties. Hi, Dear devotees, how are you feeling this Monday morning? Mataji, Mataji, is that Rohini's voice? This is our Rohini, our dear Rohini, yes. Yeah, every day I, I think and I wanted to ask you. But... <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is Rohini. She did it quickly for these sessions, yeah. Hare Krishna, Mataji, Dhanavad Pranam. Dhanavad Pranam, Jai Prabhupada. So, my dears, I'm having trouble <laughs> broadcasting either to Facebook or to YouTube. I'm trying for the last five, six minutes now. We'll have to abandon that. We'll have to abandon um, this, um, you know, our thing on the Zoom, like that. Okay. So I might try in between to to make an attempt to post, but then you know, I don't know. <laughs> People will come to Facebook; they'll be disappointed. So without much ado, we will get started with sharing the screens, and I will start sharing my second desktop here. 
And here we go. Can you see the Vigyapti Panchika prayers? Yes, Mataji. All right. So I should just get going here um, by starting with the recording first. Um, all right. Okay, it's already recording. That's good. Oh, Gyanati Marandhasya Gyananjana Shalakya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasme Shri Gurve Namaha Matsamo Nasti Papatma Naparadhi Chakashjana Parihare Vilajjame Kimbruve Purushottama Yuvati Nam Yatayini Yunam Cha Yuto Yatha Mano Bhi Ram Ravi Tadvan Mano Me Ram Tam Tvayi Bhuma Uskalita Padanam Bhumire Vavalambanam Vaisata Paradhanam Kame Vasharanam Prabhu Govinda Vallave Radhe Prathaye Tvamaham Sada Tvadiyam Niti Janatu Govinda Maam Tvaya Saha Radhe Vrindavan Adhishe Karuna Amrit Vahini Kripaya Nijapadabja Dasyam Mahyam Pradiyatam. Okay, so let's get going with the reading order. Prabhu, what do you have for reading order for us today? Uh, Ishwari Radhika Mataji, Priyanka Mataji, Sutapa Mataji, Priyanka Radhika Mataji, Suyash Manasi, Varshana Mataji, Garima Mataji, Niral Prabhu, Khyati Mataji, Shraddha Mataji. All right, so who's coming? So, uh, Suruchi Mataji is going to read. She haven't posted anything. Hare Krishna Prabhu, I can't read today. Okay, thank you. All right. <clears throat> oh Purushottama, no sinner or offender is as bad as I am. How can I describe my shame? Just as the minds of young ladies take pleasure in a young man, and the minds of young men take pleasure <clears throat> in a young woman, kindly let my mind take pleasure in you alone. Just as the ground is the only support for those whose feet have slipped, you alone are the only shelter for those who have offended you. O oh, Srimati Radharani, beloved of Lord Govinda, this is my request. May you and Lord Govinda consider me one of your assistants. O oh, Srimati Radharani, O oh, Queen of Vrindavan, you are a river flowing with the nectar of mercy. Please be kind to me and give me a little service at your lotus feet. Very nice. Okay, reflection time. Dasyam mayam pradiyatam. All right, dasyam mayam pradiyatam. Let's go and look a little bit deeper into what exactly does it mean to be somebody's das? What do you think it is? Serving them with love. With love. <clears throat> Serving them. Um, I mean, when we say Das, uh, first example, first name which comes to my mind is Hanuman, mm. always. Mm -hmm. That means and serving without expecting anything in return. Serving I without think. expecting anything in return, okay. Total surrender to the Prabhu, who we are serving. Okay, total surrender to the Prabhu you are serving. And what exactly does it mean, total surrender? We don't ask any, any questions, means, and uh, like Piti Radhika Mataji told that we don't uh, expect anything. So it's all responsibility we give to Prabhu. Give your service to your master, right? Uh, and you follow go. instructions carefully and... Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, we, like uh, the other day, Mataji, you mentioned that uh, the body is devoted to the uh, master. Spiritual master, yeah. 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 In what context did I say that? Do you remember the story? For not committing suicide. <laughs> yeah, very good. Yeah. 
Right. Exactly. So these are, um, they seem like, you know, simple statements and they are easily pronounced that, you know, I am your servant and that's the MIE and Pradeem, to make me a servant. But it's a big deal, isn't it? It's a big deal. It's total surrender or even saying that I'm surrendered to you. It's a big deal. And sometimes, and why surrender is difficult is that sometimes they might tell you things that you don't like. <laughs> they will tell you, to do things that you don't like, or they might tell you not to do things that you really like. Can you give me some examples of do things what you really like? That you would, that you'll have difficulty. Somebody may eat. Uh, Somebody may uh, what? There are people, those who uh, consume Hare Krishna Matare. Somebody might what? Hare Krishna Mataji. Sometimes uh, somebody may be consuming uh, alcohol and uh, non veg, and the Guru tells you not to do so because uh, it's against the principles. So then uh, that person may uh, uh, may not like what Guru Maharaj is telling. Yeah, but I was talking about you. <laughs> you I know you don't take alcohol or meat. I was talking about mm -hmm. what do you think would be something that will be difficult for you to give up? I think Guru Maharaj is tired to do it uh, always, but Guru Maharaj tells. Uh, but because of the uh, bodily restrictions or uh, the, uh, are, are you are set in such a way in your uh, lifestyle that you are finding it very difficult to uh, um, come to the right platform which he wants us to be on i'm looking for specifics like you say sleeping at night uh, you see at the right time i try my level best Mataji. so many times i mean since last one month i have been struggling and struggling and uh, it is a real struggle i mean i i really want to do it it is my desire to do it but somehow i i have not succeeded in that uh, so far Every day I say some tomorrow morning, this will be my routine. Yeah. So in this case, there's no clash. Somebody's telling you to do something and you also want to do it, right? Yes, I want to do yeah. it. I'm talking about clashes. <laughs> I don't have any clashes or with you, Mataji, because okay. I no, think... No, no, I'm not talking I'm about me. <laughs> I'm not your guru. <laughs> I'm just saying that, you know, in life, sometimes we have something strong. Maybe I think Khyati Mataji was trying to say something. Yes, we, she may be able to. Were you trying to say something, Khyati, or was it just a... a uh, Mataji, I was saying that Guru Maharaj always asks us to do attentive chanting, right? Mm -hmm. Even though we want to do it, some, mm -hmm. I mean, many times our because of our tendency, our mind goes in a different directions. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. something that we find, at least I find it's difficult to do for me, even though Guru Maharaj repeatedly says um, to do attentive chanting. Yeah. So in your case also, you want to do it, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there is no clash there, right? You're yeah. doing it. So there are other things that are coming, like ah, Nartha has prevented us from doing the clashes. But sometimes mm -hmm. you will, it'll be a direct, it'll be a direct th clash that, you know, I've been giving instructions and I'm not, I don't want to follow these instructions. For example, like Prabhupada just says, that you just read my books. What books do I read? Okay, you first read Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamitra, Bhagavad Gita. Right? And then I might say, no, I want to read other books also. And then we sit down and read other books. And we neglect the main books that he has told us to start read, right? So it, it comes in a very subtle manner. You might not even appear that it is a guru of a game. <laughs> and sometimes we just forget in our daily life. So it's very important to jot down what they are telling and, and again and again refer to that documentation, whatever you've written, that what were the instructions. And sometimes, you know, you start with good intentions and you meet something along the way and then you completely get diverted and you are way away from your target. And um, Guru Mahath gives that very nice example of how he says that these pilots, these pilots, when they are driving a plane, for example, it says that, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're flying, say, from San Francisco to Chicago or from San Francisco to New York, and as the plane is flying, even, even if you're off the track by one degree or a half a degree, then you will land in some other city. 
he won't land, you know, he won't reach New York like that. And he says that, that your, your, your uh, plane has to be constantly brought back to track. And the pilots do that constantly during that six hour, five hour flight that we have. So similarly in our devotional service also, we have to be very, very careful to listen to the instructions that the spiritual master has given and, um, or anybody has given, you know, if we are anybody's servants, then we have to listen to the instructions extremely carefully. And, you know, and that takes our devotional service, that takes our practice to the next level. So we start devotional service with a very uh, nice, um, with, a very, with very nice intentions. And um, there's a lot of um, what is called as a newcomer's delight. There's a newcomer's enthusiasm. And so we take it with gung ho and then we try to grab this thing and that thing and everything we want. And then, you know, when the reality strikes, then it, is, uh, it gets difficult. And then we forget and we drop these things, you know. So listen very carefully to the instructions and then follow them. Listen to instructions and follow them. It's very important. And what is it that prevents us from listening to the instructions? Uh -huh. Or anarthas, ego, ego, anarthas. ego and attachment, Mataji. So ego and attachment. attachment. Yeah. Attachment to what? To hmm. that particular, um, either it's a thing or a or a service or a like or an emotion which which we have to overcome to follow that instruction, and we just don't want to give up. Yeah. So even before you, we start following that instruction, right? What is it that prevents us from listening to it? <laughs> sense of ideas that I know things. Yes. Say that again, please, louder. louder. Own sense of ideas that I know things. I know things, yeah. This is extremely important. Extremely important. That, okay. There is this chatter that goes on inside our head that halfway through we just forget that somebody's even speaking. We want to speak. <laughs> in the middle like that or even if you're not speaking loudly we are already speaking having a conversation in our head yes that is true <laughs> yeah that is why it becomes so difficult to concentrate and as we grow in life because we gather so much of information from the environment that it becomes even more difficult for us because there is so much information to process in our mind and where is the time? As a child, we also had 24 hours. Now also we have 24 hours. As a child, we had not you know, taken so much. That's why, you know, in the first 25 years, they send you to Gurukul to study <laughs> because, you know, you're not thinking of so many other things. And believe me, like when I was studying, I did not even, ha I had no clue how the food came on the dining table. I just would not do any work at all. <laughs> no chores, nothing. I was given free reign by my parents just to study like that. Nothing, no worries at all, whether there'll be food or not today, no worries like that, you know. And then you grow up, you run, run a household. And so that's why adult learning becomes a little difficult because all these hundreds of things that are going on in, in the head. So dasya mahyam pradiyatam is something to be, you know, considered very carefully and instructions of the spiritual master. Now, who is so exemplified in following the instruction of the spiritual master? Give me some examples. Prabhupada Mataji. Prabhupada, there you go. Very rightly baked answer. He meditated on, on that, on that uh, instruction for the rest of his lifetime after he heard that, right? And then he did it when the time came. So if you listen to the instructions carefully, right? Instructions have to be listened carefully. And then you might not be able to ex execute them, but that's fine. But as long as you meditate, like Vaishana Mataji is meditating on how do I go to sleep, Chikati Mataji is meditating on how do I chant, right? But that initial surrender has got to be there. And it becomes very, very difficult um, as we grow, as we become something in life, right? Um, at some points in time when I was an adult, this thought came into my mind that when I was taking some decision, and I didn't have to refer to anybody because I was an adult. And I was like, woo, you know, <laughs> earlier I would have talked to my mom, talked to my dad, they would have given some opinions and I would have rebelled, <laughs> things like that. But then as you grow older, you know, you make your own decisions. And, and, and you know what? And some points in life when I made wrong decisions, 
I was like, I wish I had my mom <laughs> to tell me. I wish I had my mom to guide me, to scold me and things like that. So, um, so even as, even as adults, sometimes we will need somebody to guide us, somebody to scold us. Yeah. Um, as we are with our adult, we feel like less uh, stressed, you know, um, because we don't have to take every minor decisions. They are there to like help us and guide us. So, I mean, when I was in India, I felt like really very relaxed as compared to what I was here. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Now you have to do everything. And sometimes you're faced with so much of dilemma. I mean, the same thing happens with, with, with a manager and a worker, right? The person who works in the team doesn't care, does little work, whatever work is given, complain against the manager. That's fine. <laughs> that's all right. But then you do whatever you do. You don't have to worry about any other thing. But the manager has to worry about so many things. So the higher you go, the worry becomes, that's why they say uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Right? Like that. Yeah. Hare Krishna Mataji, one minute, uh, I want to, uh, I mean, uh, Vidya Madhu Mataji just called up and she said that uh, you are not seen on the Facebook. So she is uh, poor thing, she is really struggling. So if you can kindly check it. So what should you do? Um, Mataji, it is just saying recording, it's not recording on Facebook. Yeah, but what did I say? Yeah, you said that Mataji, you have having some difficulties to uh, so, uh, to uh, today that you cannot uh, means show that in the Facebook or YouTube. So you said oh, Mataji, I, I I think I came a little later than that. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. so please respond to her. Tell her I can't I can't broadcast on YouTube. I cannot broadcast on Facebook. I did try one more time while this you know while we were having this. Oh, okay, I'll just tell her. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah. I'll try to post. I'll post the recording here later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else? So, so you see, these 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 prayers are, are power packed. <laughs> they are power packed. I mean, we have been. Doing, how many months have been doing this prayer? Three months, Mataji. Yeah, almost, right? Yeah. Almost that, right? And every day something new comes out of it. New comes out. <laughs> and you can, you know, you can, yeah, so that's the power of our Vedic literature. Yeah. Anything else that you want to take out of this? Hey, Krishna Ma. Yeah. I just wanted to add that uh, even with these prayers, like based upon experiences also, as we grow spiritually, like newer, newer meanings come out and newer realizations come out too. Yes, 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 yes. So we have to be alert throughout our life and throughout the day, we have to be alert to see, okay, this is what is happening. And yes, I did the prayer in the morning and try to do the connections. You always be in, you should always be connecting the dots. Always connecting the dots. <clears throat> Hare Krishna Mataji. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a line that uh, me means we are asking Ram, Srimati Radharani that you and Lord Govinda consider me as your assistant. So, mm -hmm. so Mataji, next we are talking about the dash servant and assistant. There is a huge difference. <laughs> is there a difference between assistant and das? Yes, Mataji, I guess so. <laughs> okay, and what do you think is that is the difference? When we are t uh, telling about uh, that we are the servant, then what I told, like we surrender com um, completely. But when we are telling that assistant, that means we can like walk with him or with her like this kind of i cannot uh, tell more okay yeah so you're saying that there is a subtle there is, there is a subtle um difference between a servant and an assistant in the sense that assistant is at a slightly higher level right because he has got certain capabilities right that they will be able to help you so you're trying to do something and i'll be able to help you right? a servant also helps you in doing something but is at a lower rank right right but nevertheless, and you're right in that, but nevertheless, both of them rank below the master. Right? If I'm an executive ex assistant, then I'm not the executive. 
I'm just the executive's assistant. But yes, def definitely, when a person says, you know, looking at it from the executive's perspective and you're saying that this person is my assistant, they are giving a little bit more, you know, higher value to, to the service that is being rendered, right? But even if you're an assistant, you have to remember that that pride should not come to your mind, into your minds. Should not come to mind that this person is trying to do these pieces of work and I fit in and I'm doing this one, so I'm part of that. You should always be at a lower level thinking that, okay, you know, this service that has come, whatever that has come uh, to me, whatever piece that I'm able to assist it, assist that in, um, you know, number one, it's my good fortune that it got assigned to me. Number two, I can fail and make a mess of it all, you know, and then also to understand that if you're at a higher level of being assisting, then it is, um, the stakes are even higher. That if you mess it up, then, you know, the boss suffers because of that. So the higher the, the, the responsibility, you know, the higher the stakes are, the bigger your responsibility grows in, in doing it properly like that, yeah. What else? Nothing from the point, nothing from the... <laughs> um, like ship um kalitsa padana bhumi reva balambanam doi jata paradhanam tom eva sharanam prabhu. Mataji, I always feel that uh, I'm such a fallen soul and I <laughs> I have full gratitude for the Lord that he still gives me the shelter. So it is yeah. so wonderful. Yeah. So gratitude is important, right? Yes. Gratitude is important. Very important. Uh, gratitude drives you through. Yeah, and Mataji, I like uh, in that prayer um, that, I mean, although we have offended you, still you are uh, our, um, you are the one who we come to even after offending you and who else would be there like other than Krishna nobody else if we offend somebody and we can't go ask for like who is going to forgive like a people the fallen souls like us who keep make, making mistakes to him offending him over and over again and keep asking for forgiveness and he still every time forgives us and yes uh, like, yes 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 Good. What else? Karuna Amrita Vahini. Karuna Amrita yeah. Vahini. So how Same thing. Same thing? Not for yeah. that? <laughs> Not that she's sorry. Okay. So, so, sorry, say that last part again. Uh, this is Suruchi. Suruchi, go ahead. Suruchi. Karuna, Karuna, Karuna Amrita Vahini. Karuna Amrita Vahini. Oh, so two people said that. Yeah, so I'm just saying, uh, let's elaborate a little bit more on that. Yes. Radha Rani is very merciful. Radha Rani is very merciful. So how about, yeah, so why did we want her mercy? So that we can serve Krishna better. Please him. But, but why do we need her mercy? I can serve on my own. Hare Krishna Mataji. Mataji, if you allow, Mataji, can I speak in between? We'll have to ask uh, Ishwari Radha Mataji. Yes, Ishwari Radha I'm asking you, Shri Radha Mataji. Yeah. Mataji, can I say something in between? Sure. Uh, Mataji, uh, today um, Satyavati Mataji gave a lecture on Shikshika Shish, Ashtakam. And uh, uh, she said that Shrimati Radha Rani has got two hands and she is uh, taking uh, your prayers and giving it and offering it to the Lord with the other hand. And she is taking his mercy in one hand and she is giving it to you from the other hand. I mean, she described it, so I really wanted to share this uh, feeling. I'm sorry, Mother, in between I came. So, so, um, so why do we need that mercy? We, Mother, this life we cannot live without mercy. We, we are totally why, why? incapable. We are incapable. We have got, uh, our senses are really defective. So we cannot do anything on our own. Okay, that's one reason that we have, 
we don't have the know-how or the capability. Okay. Right? What else is there? Good. What else is there? Why do you need Radha Rani's mercy? We are fallible by nature. That is, we are prone to make mistakes and we fall down. We have a tendency to fall down. Yes. So, so is it that we have a tendency to fall down or are we already falling down? <laughs> We have fallen down. We have fallen down. We already, right? So, so that's the, the yeah. So we're already there to, to understand and to remember where we are. And then also the very first verse, what does, what does it say? Matsamo nasti papatma. Papatma na paradi chakrasana. We know our value. We know our situation. And we, then we know our helplessness. That without the mercy, we cannot, you know. We cannot. Yes, Yeah, Good. And another thing comes to my mind, Mataji, for the mercy. Uh, mothers are always very kind towards the children. <laughs> so, I mean, if I approach her, she will surely approach Krishna. That come on, give her the mercy. It's okay. She she's fallen. It is okay. Give her. <laughs> so that is why I feel. <laughs> very good. Very good. Okay. Now. Um, Okay, are we ready to go to the next phase, which is our... Yes, Madhuji, can you allow me to share with you? You know, I can, <laughs> but I'm not doing it every day. I don't know why. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> I should. All right, did I give it to you? Yes, Madhuji. Okay. And can we have the reading order? Uh, yes. Okay, while you're bringing that up, I'll read the reading order. So, Ishwari Radhika, Priyanka, Sudapa, Pridhi Radhika, Suyash, Manasi, Varshana, Garima, Neera Prabhu, Khyati Mataji, and Chaddamatji. Okay. So now today I want you all to be attentive while you're listening. Don't do anything else when others are reading. Just listen to what they're reading and be cognizant that your time has come to read. And your time comes to read, make sure to mute your, unmute yourself and speak. And after you have spoken, remember to mute yourself. So these are the instructions I'm giving today. <laughs> let's see how many heard those instructions, right? Okay, let's get going. Who comes in next to read? Mine, Mataji. Here? Okay, go ahead, Prabhu. Contents of the Gita summarized. Sanjaya said, Seeing Arjuna full of compassion, his mind depressed, his eyes full of tears, Madhusudana, Krishna spoke the following words. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, My dear Arjuna, how have these impurities come upon you? They are, they are not at all befitting a man who knows the value of life. They lead not to higher planets but to infamy. O son of Pritha, do not yield to this degre degrading importance. It does not become you. Give up such petty weakness of heart and arise, O chastiser of the enemy. Arjuna said, O killer of enemies, O killer of Madhu, how can I counter attack with arrows in a battleman like Bhishma and Drona who are worthy of my worship? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Text 5. <clears throat> it would be better to live in this world by begging than to live at the cost of lives of great souls who are my teachers. Even though desiring worldly gain, they mm -hmm. are superiors. If they are killed, everything if they are if, if they are killed, everything we enjoy will be tainted with blood. Text 6. Nor do we know which is better, conquering them or being conquered by them. If we kill the sons of Dhritarashtra, we should not care to live. Yet they are now standing before us on the battlefield. Hare Krishna. Now I am confused about my duty and have lost all composure because of the miserly weakness. In this condition, I am asking you to tell me for certain what is best for me. Now I am your disciple and a soul surrendered unto you. Please instruct me. I can find no means to dry away this grief which is drying up my senses. I will not be able to dispel it. Even I win a prosperous unrivaled kingdom of, on earth with sovereignty like the demigods in heaven. 
Hare Krishna. Text 9. Sanjay has said, Having spoken thus, Arjuna, the chastiser of enemies, told Krishna, Govinda, shall I not I shall not fight? And fell silent. O descendant of Bharata, at that time Krishna, smiling in the midst of both the armies, spoke the following words to the grief stricken Arjuna. Prabhu, can you scroll up? Text 11. The Supreme Personality of God had said, While speaking learned words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor for the dead. Never was there a time when I did not exist. Nor you, nor all these kings, nor in the future any, nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. As the embodied soul continuously passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body at death. A sober person is not bewildered by such a change. O son of Kunti, the non-permanent appearance of happiness and distress and the disappearance in due course are like the appearance and disappearance of winter and summer seasons. They arise from sense perception or shine of Bharata and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. O oh, best among men, Arjuna, the person who is not disturbed by happiness and distress and is steady in both is certainly eligible for liberation. Those who are seers of the truth have concluded that of the non-existent, the material body, there is no endurance and of the eternal, the soul, there is no change. This they have concluded by studying the nature of both. Text 17. That which pervades the entire body should know to be indestructible. No one is able to destroy that imperishable soul. The material body of the indestructible, immeasurable, and eternal living entity is sure to come to an end. Therefore, fight, O descendant of Bharata. Neither he who thinks the living entity, the shlayer, nor he who thinks it slain, is in knowledge, for the self slays not, nor in slain. For the soul, there is neither the birth nor death at any time. He has not come into being, does not come into being, and will not come into being. He is unborn, eternal, ever existing, revival. He is not slain when the body is slain. O Partha, how can a person who knows that the soul is indestructible, eternal, unborn, and immutable kill anyone or cause anyone to kill? As a person puts on new garments, giving up old ones, the soul similarly accepts new material bodies, giving up the old and useless ones. The soul can never be cut to pieces by any weapon, nor burned by fire, nor moistened by water, nor withered by the wind. This individual soul is unbreakable and insoluble, and can be neither burned nor dried. He is everlasting, present everywhere, unchangeable, immovable, and eternally the same. It is said that soul is invisible, inconceivable, and immutable. Knowing this, you should not grieve for the body. If, however, you think that the soul or the symptoms of life will always be born and die forever, you still have no reason to lament, O mighty arm. Text 27. One who has taken his birth is sure to die, and after death one is sure to take birth again. Therefore, in the, in the unavoidable discharge of your duty, you should not claim it. All created beings are unmanifest in their big name, manifest in their interim state, and unmanifest again when annihilated. So what need is there for limitation? Hare Krishna. Some look on the soul as amazing. Some describe him as amazing. Some hear of him as amazing. While others, even after hearing about him, cannot understand him at all. O descendant of Bharata, he who dwells in the body can never be slain. Therefore, you need not grieve for any living being. 
X31, considering your specific duty as a Kshatriya, you should note that there is no better engagement for you than fighting on religious principles, and so there is no need for hesitation. O oh, Partha, happy are the Kshatriyas to whom such fighting opportunities come unsought, opening for them the doors of the heavenly planets. If, however, you do not perform your religious duty of fighting, then you will certainly incur sins for neglecting your duties and thus lose your reputation as a fighter. People will always speak of your infamy and for a respectable person, dishonor is worse than death. The great generals who have highly esteemed your name and fame will think that you have left the battlefield out of fear only and thus they will consider you insignificant. Your enemies will describe you in many unkind words and scorn your ability. What could be more painful for you? O oh, son of Kunti, either you will be killed on the battlefield and attain the heavenly planets, or you will conquer and enjoy the earthly kingdom. Therefore, get up with determination and fight. Do thou fight for the sake of fighting, without considering happiness or distress, loss or gain, victory or defeat, and by so doing, you shall never incur sin. Very bold. Okay, so we have done the first part of Bhagavad Gita chapter 2 and number 12. Thank you, Shuesh Prabhu. So who goes in next? Um, I'll go read Mataji. Mm -hmm. Na twa eva ham jatu nasham na twam ne me janadhipa na chaiva na bhavishyama sarve vayam ataparam. Okay, let's go back and look at this word. Um, the last word in the first line. Sarve. No, no, first. No, uh, nasham. 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 Is it nasham? Nas nasam. <laughs> so this is this is what I call as the mind reads ahead of the eyes, right? Yeah. Because you're tuned to the nash, right? Nash, and we are talking about death, and Arjuna has been talking about nash in general, but yeah. it is na asam. Na asam. It's na asam from na asam, mm. right? And it did not exist. Asam means to exist, right? So this is how, and now you will see, and this is what we are doing in Bhagavad Gita. We are trying to understand. And apply that in our lives right we say it's a manual of life so in the third chapter we will come where it will it'll talk about the hierarchy lowest is the dull matter of the matter is the senses of the senses is the mind so although your eyes are seeing it very clearly you know what it is written and eyes have not you know converted that into a sha we are still conveying that there are s over there but the mind comes in between intervenes in between and you'll see, and all of us do that, and I'm famous for doing it, you know, the, the, the baggage that we carry with us, you know, the samskara that we carry. So they are, this subtly, you see how subtly the mind comes, here, comes there in between and catches up like that, yeah. So, it, so what should we do? Read the solution. Read more carefully. Alert, Madhuri, more alert. alert. Yeah, and this is why Satyadev Prabhu always says, be present in the moment. Right. I mean, I, it happens to me all the time. Even during the prayers, your mind will go somewhere else. You know, for a short while, think of something and then come back. It's amazing creature. <laughs> the design of the mind is amazing. How it can do all that, right? Like even in the middle, like you're talking some sentence, you're speaking something, and even in the middle of that, it'll go somewhere and then come back. Right? Right, Madhuri, my mind was thinking that how I'm like able to put it in a tune or not, <laughs> I'm not worried about reading the words correctly. Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah. So this is, yeah, just a subtle thing. And, and that's why, just a subtle, that's why, you know, um, uh, when I was growing up, there used to be um, posters, like you know, paintings on the wall, they would say, and I'll translate that into English. Um, it said, it says that, Savdhani um, Hati, uh, Durghatna Ghati, right? So, it, which, which means that, you know, if you are not um, concentrating or not focusing and not attentive, actually, for, for even for a fraction of a moment, then you, you will have an accident. So, it used to be on the roads for people to, you know, be careful while they are driving. And the same thing applies here in devotional life, lifestyle also, right? Just as this mind can creep in, then the Maya also creeps in like that. Without even knowing it, bang in the middle of something, <laughs> it'll creep like that. Yeah. 
So that's the lesson that we learn, you know, from from Bhagavad Gita. That Bhagavad Gita is telling you that you know this is what it is. This is what it is. This is what the situation is. That your mind is superior to your senses. Period. That's that's what we have it given. This is what you have. You have a mind that is you know superior to your senses. Well, then how can we make good use of that information? If the mind is superior to the senses, engage it in Krishna's service. Yeah, you use the mind to control mm. your senses. Mm. Because the mind is superior to the senses, right? We right. saw just now the mind was superior to the senses in a wrong way, though, right? But the same mind, because it has got that capability, right? So it is there. It is superior to the senses. It's just about how I employ it, how I gainfully employ it in my devotional service. And to do that, first thing we have to do is they have to know, right? When you go to the doctor and you say that, you know, this is happening, that is happening. What does the doctor first do? He examines, right? He'll put his stethoscope, he'll check your pulse, he will check your temp temperature and all that. Similarly, we also have to constantly see what's going on. And that's why we have to be observant. And to be observant, what we have to do is we have to sit and um, sit and observe and practice that. The mind won't even allow you to observe. <laughs> you sit down to observe after some time. So that's why Satyadeva Prabhu always says, be present in the moment. And it's a very difficult thing to do, be present in, in the moment. Even things like, you know, we sit down to eat and we are not present in the moment. Mataji, is it intelligence which is going to control our mind? Or like yes. when, when you're saying that be present in the moment, yes. what is it which is... Yes, it will make the mind be present in the moment, right? And to think about things which are there in the moment. So that is why, again, that verse, I think is 3.42. It comes to your rescue because then say, okay, so what do I do? I have got this mind, which is more intelligent than senses. senses so how do I tame this mind? Will you tame your mind? with intelligence. That's also something that has been given to us. But the mind is so powerful that sometimes it appears to be overtaking the intelligence also. And we have to constantly apply that, constantly say, reasoning, reason it out, reason out on every thought that comes to your mind. Reason it out. And it has to be done quickly. Sometimes <laughs> the action happens and then the reasoning comes after that. Right? That, oh, yeah, Mataji, because mind is so much faster. I don't know. I feel that my mind is faster than my intelligence. Intelligence is struggling, com yes. trying to compete with it, but it's not. All of us. Yeah, all of us. But, but, but the fact is that, you know, you have taken to devotional service, which means that, that the intelligence was, was dominating, did dominate, right? Because you take, took that decision. Right? So all that we have to do is become more pally pally with the intelligence. Like they say, intelligence is closer to the soul and the mind is closer to the senses. The mind will operate on whatever things you are, the senses are gathering from the environment. And mind will have a record of all the desires and it will also make the senses go in that direction. So it's, 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 a, pretty, it's a pretty bad situation. <laughs> because you have, number one, the senses are gathering information and it's not that they just gather the information like that. They, will, they are under the control of the mind. Because of what sense, desires that we have in our mind, the eyes will see only what you want to see. You look at a picture and you can see, you know, someone can see something, somebody can see something else, right? We always have that very interesting picture where you look at it and one angle you look, you see a very old woman, another angle you look, it's a very young woman that you see lady there, right? People use that a lot for icebreakers in the classes, etc. So eyes will see whatever they want, you know, the mind wants to see. Like, for example, you're looking at the screen, you're seeing my room here. Yeah, what do you see? <laughs> Give me some examples of what are you seeing here. You, Mataji. <laughs> okay, are you seeing me? Okay. So her focus is on me. Anything else you see? Okay. Your necklace, pearls. You see my pearls. There you go. <laughs> so you see, she didn't see that. <laughs> Somebody else saw, right? So you will see whatever you want to see. Somebody might just say, oh, look at that black spot over there. Should the mother is not cleaning. <laughs> like that, right? So you will see whatever you want to see. If you're like cleanliness freak, you will not see anything. You will just see the spot over there, right? If you like ornaments, you will see the pearl necklace, <laughs> right? If you're listening to something, you might see a teacher over there. 
So your senses will see things that your mind has got, you know, desire to see like that. But then even after the mind has seen that and is giving further thoughts on what should be done after you have seen it. For example, somebody might say that, you know, I should buy a necklace also. <laughs> Why not? You know, that those thoughts will come. But then the intelligence will override that, Priyanka. The intelligence, you have to apply the intelligence and say, it's always weigh. That's what I'm saying, deliberate. The deliberate is when you're employing your intelligence and weighing the various thoughts that are there. This is good for devotional service. This is not good for devotional service. This is good for devotional service. This is not good for devotional service. And our Arjuna was is just thinking, ya ye jaye wu, ya na jaye you. He was saying that, right? It doesn't, I don't know what is much better. He was weighing it. He was saying, I don't know whether our winning is better or their winning is better. Right? He's doing all that. And then now Krishna is totally changing. Like I said, he's totally changing his paradigm in this verse. He's going to say that, you know, um, you are lamenting a lot. Ashochyan anavashochastvam pragyavadam sabhasase gatasuna gatasunsa nanu sochanti pandita. So panditas don't lament. So who is a pandita? What is the knowledge, the right knowledge that I'm going to get that will make me a pandita? Right? And that is this particular verse there. Right? Good. Who comes in next to give us the word by word? Yes, Mataji. <clears throat> Na neva tu but eva certainly aham I jatu at any time na did not asam exist na not tuam you na not ime the is ime or ime 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 all days jana adhipaha kings Na, never, cha, also, eva, certainly, na, not, vavishya, yamaha, shall exist, sarve vayam, all of us, atha param, thereafter. He hereafter. Oh, sorry, Mataji, hereafter. Okay. Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you nor all these kings, nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. Perfect. In the Vedas, in the Katha, Katha Upanishad, as well as in the Shvetashwara Upanishad, it is said that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the maintainer of innumerable living entities in terms of their different situations according to individual work and reaction of work. That Supreme Personality of Godhead is also by his plenary portions alive in the heart of every living entity. Only saintly person who can see within and without the same Supreme Lord can actually attain to perfect and eternal peace. Nityo Nityanam Chetanas Chetananam Eko Bahunam Yo Vidadati Kamam Kaman Tam Atmas Tam Ye Nupasyanti Diras Tesam Sanita Santi Saswati Nitresh Sam. Next. The, the same Vedic truth given to Arjuna is given to all persons in the world who pose themselves as a very learned, but factually have but a poor fund of knowledge. The Lord says clearly that he himself, Arjuna and all the kings who are assembled on the battlefield are eternally individual beings and that the Lord is eternally the maintainer of the individual living entities, both in their conditioned and in their liberated situations. The other person can read about it. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the Supreme Individual Person and Anjuna, the Lord's Eternal Associate and all the kings assembled there are individual eternal person. It is not that they did not exist as individuals in the past and it is not that they will not remain eternal persons. 
their individuality exists in the past and their individuality will continue in the future without interruption. Therefore, there is no cause for lamentation for anyone. Hare Krishna. The Mayavadi theory uh, uh, that after liberation, the individual soul separated by covering of Maya or illusion will merge into the impersonal Brahman and loses individual ex existence is not supported herein by Lord Krishna, the supreme authority. Nor is the theory that we only think of individuality in the conditions su state supported herein. Krishna clearly herein says herein that in future also the individuality of Lord and others, as it is confirmed in the Upanishads, will continue eternally. This, this statement of Krishna is Krishna's is authoritative because Krishna cannot be subject to illusion. If individuality were not a fact, then Krishna would not have stressed it so much, even for the future. The Krishna, Mayavadi may argue that individuality spoken by Krishna is not spiritual, but material. Even accepting the argument that individuality is material, then how can one distinguish Krishna's individuality? Krishna affirms his individuality in the past and confirms his individuality in the future also. He has confirmed his individuality in many ways. An impersonal Brahman has been declared to be subordinate to him. Krishna has maintained spirituality, spiritual individuality all along. If he, if he is accepted as an ordinary conditioned soul in individual consciousness, then his Bhagavad Gita has no value as authoritative scriptures. Uh, a common man with all the four defects of human frailty is unable to teach that which is worth hearing. The Gita above such literature. No mundane book compares with the Bhagavad Gita. When one accepts Krishna as an ordinary man, the Gita loses all, all importance. The Mayavadi argues that the plurality mentioned in the, this verse is conventional and that it refers to the body. But, but previous to this verse, such bodily conception is already condemned. After condemning the bodily conception of living entities, how was it possible for Krishna to place a conventional proposition on the, on the body again? Therefore, individuality is mean, mentioned on the spiritual ground and is thus confirmed by great acharyas like Sri Ramanuja and others. It is clearly mentioned in many places in Gita that this in spiritual individuality is understood by those who are the devotees of the Lord. I think next person can read. Those who are envious of Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead have no bona fide access to the great literature. The non-devotees approach to the teachings of the Gita is something like that of a bee licking on a bottle of honey. Now, this is something which is mentioned many times, repeated many times, that non-devotees approach reading the Bhagavad Gita is like licking a bottle of honey from the outside. Right? And so what's the verse number that you will quote? 2.12. 2.12, exactly, for 600 points, right? So remember, 2.12. Two dozen, right? It's talking about the honey, is where the honey example is quoted. One cannot, taste, one cannot have a taste of honey unless one opens the bottle. Similarly, the mysticism of the Bhagavad Gita can be understood only by devotees and no one else can taste it, as it is stated in the fourth chapter of the book. Nor can the Gita be touched by persons who are who envy the very existence of the Lord. Therefore, the Mayavadi explanation of the Gita is a most misleading presentation of the whole truth. Lord Chaitanya has forbidden us to read commentations made by the Mayavadis and warns that one who takes to such an understanding of the Mayavadi philosophy loses all power to understand the real mystery of the Gita. If individuality refers to the empirical universe, then there is no need of teaching by the Lord. The plurality of the individual soul and the Lord is an eternal fact. And it is confirmed by the Vedas as above mentioned. Okay, good. Time for us to do the reflection. We have read this verse, the purport two times. and It's a heavy purport. But now let's take some reflections now.
it was a lot of information right um, madhaji uh, i kind of get what the what's in the purport but i i do not understand this uh, plurality of the I, i mean a lot of technical words in there so this plurality of the so which was towards the end of the purport we just read um can you please explain that okay so let's take some reflections on what that did others think about plural is talking about matter and spirit mata ji no so plural there is a there, there are there are two right plural means that there's more than one right right okay so they are talking about you so you look at plurality from two perspective one is from the body and the soul perspective yeah so that is one thing that they are saying and then what else how he has expanded in the universe okay that krishna has expanded so one has become many eko eko bahunam okay that we are so many of us like uh, we all retain our individuality even after we transgress in different lifetimes and our relationship with the lord also remain can, contains it flavor and individuality so that is like pluralism in still maintaining our individuality is my understanding okay so um yes so what is uh, yeah so what you're saying is that individual souls are there right so there are infinite souls and each one of them then is an individual in itself right so there is plurality coming from there that there are different souls are there right so that's that's one right and what else what is the okay i'll give you a hint there's another plurality that is mentioned there and that is what is used by propa to bash the mayavad philosophy mata ji we are different from the lord we are not the same as the lord are not the same of the lord that is also the plurality so there is plurality in in one aspect that like you have pointed out the between the body and the soul there is plurality that there are many different souls and then there is plurality most important plurality is that there is god and then there is you as um, vashika babu you know sometimes quotes i think it was saint francis of assisi who said that i've studied my whole life and from my whole life experience i know that there is a god and that i am not him so that's you know clear bashing of the mayavad philosophy so that there is god and then there is me so the plural that there are two so they will be there like that so we are not one in god we are not god more importantly like that so, so that's the plurality so that does make sense priyanka yes mataji thank you all right what else mataji could you expand on nitya nitya naam chetna chetna naam this okay. whole verse okay uh, can you you'll have to bring it up on the on the uh, that nitya nitya naam chetna chetna naam eko bahu naam yo vidati kaman i think it was in the first part of the purport itself it was there yeah right so nitya means eternal right and then chetna chetna means what is chetna consciousness consciousness right so consciousness so it is eternal so nityo nitya naam so he's saying that among all the eternals i'm talking about the eternal for example if i say among all the birds the bird what comes to your mind when i'm saying among all the birds the bird which bird comes to your mind garuda garuda like that right so you're talking about somebody who is the best in all the birds it's garuda among all the flowers the flower lotus lotus see i have a i have a room full of devotees <laughs> you look at how what you're bringing up right so similarly he's saying that among all the eternals the eternal so like soul is eternal but among all the eternals the eternal so what do you think they're talking about the supreme lord krishna the supreme lord krishna right so among all the conscious right among all the people who are conscious the conscious one so who do you think that is krishna right and why are we calling krishna as the supreme conscious why am i why am i am also conscious what is the difference between he is the super soul from him everyone came so consciousness consciousness means 
what does consciousness mean actually when you say that he's conscious i was unconscious what, what does consciousness mean actually that there is a person okay yeah. there's a person yeah is it that he knows everything in and yeah, out? Yeah, he knows. See, I'm conscious of it. You, she was not even conscious of what she was talking. She was not even conscious of my feelings. Like, did not know. So among all the conscious, he's the supreme conscious. Why? Because how much do I know about myself? How much do I know? And how does my knowing compare with Krishna's knowing? Where does he score? We are limited. He's... His knowledge and consciousness is unlimited. It's unlimited, right? Okay. And so, so let's get down a little bit more into it and see that what do I know? What do you think we would know? I mean, I know means us. You know, what do we know? What we can perceive with our senses okay. and our limited intelligence is what I know. Okay. So my, my senses are, are limited. I can't, cannot see so many things. So from that perspective, my knowledge is limited, right? Okay. And then what about, our, I'm in this body, so I would know my body? Do I know my body? No, no I'm so inside of the body. body. Right, okay, do I know my mind? What is going on in my mind? I know that, right? Do you know what's going on in other people's minds? No. no. And who knows that? Krishna. Krishna. Right, Fine. so you see how he's superior to us? He knows that. But because of envy of Krishna, we don't want to, to accept that. <laughs> so, Nityo Nityanam Chetanas Chetanam Eko Bahunam Yo Vidudhati Kaman. There is only Eko. Eko means one. Ek. There is only one who is Bahunam to many. Bahu means many, right? So, there is only one who, what does he do to the many? Vidudhati Kaman. He satisfies their desires. Only one. Isn't it? And we get tired, like we have two kids and one kid pulls us in this direction, another kid, kid pulls us in that direction. And we are like, oh, I, what do I do? Do I take care of my son? Do I take care of my daughter? What do you do when my husband is calling me and my mother-in-law wants something from there? My boss is now on the phone. Right? Look at Krishna. <laughs> and look at Krishna and how much we pull him, right? All of us are constantly praying. I want this. I want this. I want this. I want this. Sometimes as parents, we said, okay, keep quiet. Go away. Go to the other room. Let mommy work. Let daddy work. We say that, right? <laughs> but Krishna is, Eko bahunam yo vidadati kaman. He is fulfilling our desires. He created this entire material universe to fulfill our desires. You know, so that's the essence of how much he does for us. So, ignityo nitanam chetana chetana eko dhanam. Tam atma stham ye anupasyati dhira. So he is inside. He is inside you. Right? Te sham santi shasvate na tere sham. And if you understand that, that he is inside you, that is going to give you shanti, everlasting peace. Nothing else is going to give you peace. Why? Because if you scroll back up to the verse from today, what, what is Krishna saying? Can you sing? Um, C.S. Prabhu, can you scroll the screen? Yeah. So what is saying that, yeah, a little bit more up to the Sanskrit? Yeah. Na to eva ham jatu na sham. Right? So na sam. That never was, time, was a time when I did not exist, nor you. Na tom neme janadi paha. Janadi paha is all the kings. So not, not never a time when... You did not exist, nor in the future. Ataparam is in the future, right? So in the future, Sarvevayam. Nor in the future shall any one of us cease to be, right? And so any one of us is also referencing a little bit of a plurality there, right? So there's a plurality, and what Prabhupada says in the end is that, you know, that the Mayavadis are saying, uh, and, you know, um, that... Here, the, word, the plurality that Krishna is mentioning is the general plurality that, you know, you and I like that. But the devotees, when they talk about you and I, they are distinguishing between Krishna and the rest of the souls. So there's another element of plurality that they are looking there. It's not just plural that all these millions of people who are there, including me from Krishna's perspective. No. Yes, you know, there's a plurality, but then is that there is subtle more distinction inside. Like, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Mayavadis. Who are Mayavadis? Who are Mayavadis? That's a very good point, right? So Mayavadis, what they say is that you are a soul 
and I'm a soul. And that's it. We are, if there is God, we are God. Then the question will come at that, you know, our definition of God is, you know, he's the most beautiful, he's the most powerful. Then how come I'm not able to do certain things? If I'm powerful, I should be able to do everything, right? I'm not able to do that. So the Mayavadis say that because we have come under the control of Maya, so we are limited. Maya is controlling us. So that is why this is known as Mayavad. When you're talking uh, and explaining certain things, taking Maya into consideration, that becomes Mayavad. Okay? But then the flaw in this kind of thinking is that how have we defined God? Right? We have defined God as the most powerful also, isn't it? So if, Maya, if, if God is the most powerful, then how Maya can control him? Right? So this means there's something wrong in our definition of God. Because if Maya can control God, then go pray to Maya. Then Maya is, is God. <laughs> right? Somebody, Maya is the most powerful because she could control the one that you define. Right? So our premise is based on the fact of our definition of God. He's older than the oldest, faster than the fastest. He's the most powerful, most beautiful, most rich, most fame, and most renounced like that. So that this, this concept itself is flawed. That, you know, I'm talking about the supreme, but then I'm talking about somebody who controls. Right? Like that. So that is called as Mayavadi philosophy. When you are thinking that I am myself, I am God. Does that make sense, um, Suresh Prabhu? Yes, Mabaji. Yeah. So that's called Mayavadi, right? So we have to understand that there is, um, uh, let me just explain, since this term came up and we are recording this for posterity, um, there's also a term known as Sakar and Nirakar mm -hmm. and Sagun and Nirgun. Right? Have you come, have you come across these words? Yes, Mabaji. Right? Yes. Okay. So let's take them one by one. And we sometimes, uh, you know, use them synonymously, but they are not synonyms of each other. Like they are not pairs that are synonyms. So sakar. Or. Yeah, akar. Sa, akar. Very good. Yeah. So sakar means you have a form. Nirakar means that you don't have a form. Okay? So some people will look at God as sakar means he has a form. And some will say he's nirakar, he doesn't have a form. Okay. Then we say sagun and nirgun. So what is the meaning of sagun and nirguna here? Okay. So Good qualities. Yeah. So and then we say God is nirguna. So God has no good qualities. <laughs> so guna here is actually referring to the qualities of material nature. The guna. Guna, another word for guna is a rope. But with a rope, you, you tie things, right? So similarly, the modes of material nature tie us here. So saguna, we are saguna. We are embodied. We are in the control of modes of material nature. The modes of material nature have an, have an effect on this embodied soul that is here, is sitting in front of you, right? But nirguna means that he does not have any material properties. So when you say God is nirguna, he has no material qualities. Saguna, we are saguna, we have God. Because again, when I say we, I'm talking, again. notice the choice of words. I'm saying embodied living being. If you remove the soul out of the body, then soul is also nirguna because soul as such doesn't have any material properties because soul is spirit, pure spirit. And that is what Krishna is slowly going to explain to Arjuna here. Right? The soul has no such properties. Krishna has no such um, material properties. Soul also doesn't have material properties. But when the soul is embodied and imprisoned in a, in a material body and through the false ego thinks that I am this body, right? Then he is saguna. So saguna and nirguna. Like that. It's very different from sakar and, and nirakar. So those who are saying Krishna is nirakar, they are not saying that he is, you know, or those who are saying Krishna is Sakar, which means Krishna has a form, that doesn't mean that he's Sagun also. No, Sagun means that he has a material form. No, Krishna doesn't have a material form. Krishna is Sakar, has got a form, but he is Nirguna, right? Because his form is spiritual, like that, right? So you make a distinction between these, these things. So those who are looking at the Nirakar, those who say that God is Nirakar, which aspect of the God are they looking at? 
What is Fulgence it? of the God. There you go. You got it right. Yeah. So now you made the connection. So our Shastras are not denying. We are not saying that God is, because remember we said the definition of God is that when you ask a question about God, the answer should be yes. Okay. So we're saying, is God formless? Yes. Is God has a form? Yes. Now it's like, come on, what are you saying? <laughs> but then you rise to the higher level. Vadanti tat tatridas tatam yad gyanam advayam brahmeti parmatmeti bhagwaniti shabdate. So God is known by three aspects of God. There is Brahman, as uh, um, Priyanka pointed out. Brahmeti, Parmatmeti, as the super soul, and then Bhagwan as the supreme personality of God. And you, and you understand that, right? So when they are saying, and again here, in uh, so so when people are looking at these aspects, so they are when they are those who are saying God is a form, and those who are saying God doesn't have a form. So they are personalists and impersonalists like that. Impersonalists will say God doesn't have a form and personalists say that God has a form. Nonetheless, both of them are saying that God has a, they are, they are talking on a spiritual realm. They're not talking on the material realm. They are on a spiritual realm at that level they are saying that he's something spiritual, doesn't have a form. So they get to the effulgence, which is spiritual in nature. So, Mataji, impersonalists are different from Mayavadis. Right, right. You got it. You are now connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. So, impersonalists are not Mayavadis. Mm -hmm. Right? My, that's why they say impersonalists, you know, some, you know in, in the Chaitan Shatamita, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes very strongly about, against Mayavadis. Mayavadis sunile bhasha. Mayavad bhasha sunile hue sarvanash. You say, is there anybody? you know, listens mm -hmm. to Mayavadi philosophy, it will be complete sarvanaj because you're right here going on the path of devotional service and somebody just comes and says that you're God. Oh my goodness, it's such an alluring thought to think that I'm God. I didn't even know that. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then but all devotional service gets thrown out of the window because now you're God. So that's why your sarvanaj happens when you think of that. On the other hand, those who are impersonalists are thinking about God. They're thinking about on a spiritual realm but they just don't think that there is a form. And Prabhupada explains that, that why do people take to impersonalism? Because we are, we are embodied, we have got a body, and all that we see are bodies around us, right? We all see form, that's what the eyes are meant to do, right? Eyes are meant to see form, that's the sense organ, that's what it collects information about. The form of this, the form of this, this is a form, this is a form, right? You're seeing me, this is a form, like that. So it's constantly seeing, you, seeing, seeing forms. And, but they also realize that form gives you grief, right? What are the different forms that give you grief? Family members. <laughs> <laughs> right? You see some forms give you grief, family members give you grief, but a lion comes there, there's a lion going outside your window every day, that'll give you grief, right? Mm -hmm. A coyote can go box through your garden, that'll give you, gives you grief, like, like that. So form gives you grief. So in the process of trying to get out of this grief and this miserable situation, because we are, so, we are, um, and we are happy by nature, right? Anand, we are anandmayi by nature. So we're looking for that happiness and these forms are all giving us happiness. So when I'm defining the supreme happiness, the place where I'm going to go, the person or, you know, wherever I, I cannot talk without referring to person, but wherever I'm going to go, you know, it shouldn't have a form because form is giving me grief. So for them, when they define God, God doesn't have a form like that. But the problem here is that I have a form. Even if I'm, a, if I'm embodied, I definitely have a form, as you can see. But even as a soul, my soul also has a form. The soul will have eyes, you know, <laughs> you know if it's on a particular type of form, you know. So soul, soul has a form. There's a spiritual body also that we have that has got a form in, in, in it. So we cannot get away from the form. Everything has a form. And, and our, our method, our philosophy, always talks about terms like personality of fear. Right? Personality of death. Like that. So we, as personality of Vedas. Right? So everything has got a personality here. Even the thoughts that we produce in our mind have got a personality of their own. So we are very much into the personal and the personality realm. Right? So... So the soul looking for some relief from this misery thinks that the biggest thing that gives me misery is this body. And there's no doubt about that. Um, so they try to find their solace in a place 
where there is no or in a concept which is formless they go there but because they themselves are con conscious and they themselves are, are are have a form in them and also the third most important thing is that the souls are wired to do service and you cannot it's very difficult to serve something that doesn't have a form can you give me examples of what you can do service to if you're doing a service Give me some example. You do service the whole day, don't you? Service to parents, service you to your service children. To kids. Okay. So, so they have form? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mother. Right? Everything will have a form, even, if, even though in the interim, sometimes it might appear it doesn't have a form. Like, for example, um, I am serving the words of my spiritual master. I'm serving the instructions of my spiritual master. So it might appear that it's abstract, right? These are words. But where did the words come from? They came from a form, right? They came from the spiritual master, right? So there's always a form associated with, with things. So when I do service, I'm directly or indirectly always serving some form. I'm serving the government. What is government? Right? They're people who we are serving, right? And they put some laws. And so the laws might appear to not have any form, although our philosophy will still say that the laws also have got forms. But even if you look at it from the more mundane perspective, you know, the laws are there, but the laws have come from a human being. You know, they have come from a form like that. So there's always a form. And so we are, we are wired to serve a form. And which form? Nitya Nitya Naam Chetana Chetana Naam. That form, which is the, you know, the eternal of the eternal and the conscious of the conscious, the best of the best. We are wired to serve him. And when we go and be in an environment where there is no form, you're hanging in the Brahma Jyoti. So you leave this material body, you get liberated. The soul goes and just hangs in the Brahma Jyoti. Like that. Like how, you know, you have, when you make a cake and you put the currants inside it, you know, those, those red and green color thing that kids like a lot. So then it's all inside the cake, right? In different places. You, the cake is the Brahma Jyoti and soul is the current. That's how you are there hanging but not doing anything. So what happens is I'm trying to do something which is against my nature. So I get bored. So when I get bored, I'm not getting any enjoyment because my enjoyment only comes from serving the Lord. That's how I'm wired. So when I don't get any enjoyment from, you know, from wherever which state stayed ahead, I will go back. I will try to find enjoyment. And what is the enjoyment that I know from my experience, what I enjoyed in this material world? Right? I was enjoying this material world till my, um, my impersonal spiritual master came and told me that there is no form, you, this is how you should do. So yes, Krishna says that even those who meditate on the impersonal form, they will come to me. He says they will go to Krishna, but he says it's very difficult to do. But anyway, so they still do it. So which means in that process, they gave up a lot of their pleasures. So it's not that impersonalists don't put regulative principles on you. They will put regulative principles. So you gave up so many things. You gave up all your pleasures to find God, which was impersonal. And you go there and now you're bored. So you're like, oh, why did I do all that? There was a lot of fun going on there. It was much better there. I was more happy till my spiritual master came and said, stop all this nonsense. I'm going to go back. So that is why they say that the souls from the Brahma Jyoti fall down back into this material world. Most of them will do that. Majority. 99.9 .9 will fall down because of this. Only a very rare few will go beyond that. From the Brahma Jyoti, they'll say, okay, let me find out something better than this. And then they'll go, to, go back to Godhead. That, that doesn't happen rarely. It happens rarely. That impersonalist will become a personalist like that. So they are, you can be liberated and then fall down again to this material world. Right? So this cycle of, you know, going up and falling down, going up and falling down. If you come back down here, again, you have the samskaras. Again, you might get the same spiritual master. Again, he'll take you to, you know, impersonalism. Again, you'll go up and again, you'll fall down. So this falling down, going up, falling down, going up will happen all the time. Right? And uh, um, so, so if there is, if we are lucky and fortunate enough that some devotee who is a personalist comes and gives us that knowledge, then we are very, very lucky, like Prabhupada, you know, right? He's every time he senses that, you know, we might think that maybe God is impersonal and immediately in the purport, you see like, you know, six or seven lines you know, on that, right? 
So in consequence of that, and then, but here is what happens, that when you are on the path of impersonalism, when there is no Vishnu there in front of you in the form, when there is no way that you see the majesty of Vishnu and the descriptions and read the Shastras about how there is a Vishnu personality of Vishnu who's lying on the ocean and from his navel sprouts this huge universe of billions and billions of planets. Unless you don't read all that, it will be, there are very high chances for you to think that there is no difference between me and God, that there is no plurality there. It's all oneness there. Me and God are one. There is no two there. So that is why when you go on the path of impersonalism, there are very high chances that you will fall into what Prabhupada calls as the last snare of Maya. And what is the last snare that Maya throws at you? Like when you're doing your devotional service, okay, fine. I'm going for the impersonal concept of God, but still I'm on the, some path of devotional service. So last snare that she throws in your way is that you start to think that I am God. So that is why people who are on the impersonal path, they end up sometimes become Mayavadis also, like that. So that is why, although there is a distinction between Mayavadis and, and um, impersonalists, but impersonalists tend to become Mayavadis later on. So we should shun both of them in the sense that, okay, fine, you know, I'm not shun in the sense that I don't follow them. But Ma Mataji, I was thinking that um, even those impersonalists, they are like, inten their intentions are probably good. They are still yes. praying to God. They just yes. not to a form. Um, isn't Krishna merciful to them and, you know, give them this um, enlightenment, enlightenment in their following life, at least, that they, they can see him uh, in person? Or, I mean, I, I, I was, it's just... <laughs> this, is, this, this is a devotee's heart. <laughs> you see, how, this is how compassion works. We say Karuna Amrita Vahini, we say that early in the morning about Radha, right? So I've right. got a part of that, her energy is in us as well. And the compassion that you have is coming from her, right? So now you're feeling bad. Now that you have understood the philosophy and you know, like, oh, the man, this man did so much of work has come down again. And that is why we preach. And that is why we go out. Who's going to tell them? Krishna is not going to tell them. Why? Because they don't believe in Krishna. They don't believe in the form, right? They believe in something which is formless. Somebody has to go and tell them. And that is why the preachers will always take you know, that burden on their head, they'll go out, run, rain or sunshine, they will go out and preach, whether they are listening or not listening, argumentative, insulting towards us, all that thing can happen, but, you know, they will still go out and preach. That is why you see preaching is so important. And all of you should preach. Like that. Yeah. Because you have compassion, because you have found something there. Why, why do you think that Prabhupada, at such a ripe age, with so much of illness around him, why do you think Prabhupada had to um, write and translate all the books? Why did he have to translate the books? He understood all that. Mm -hmm. right? But he did it for others, for us to be able to read, for us to be able to follow like that. Right? So for some of us, like it comes naturally that, um, I mean, we, we, like when I think of, uh, any time in my life, even from early childhood, I always thought of um, God in, in a form. I never had, uh, but then at the same time, my mom always thinks of him as a nirakar, uh, like a lie. She, she's like effulgence. And then I'm thinking, I mean, she taught me also the same thing, but I got from the very beginning, I always thought of uh, you know uh, a form of the lord and i always so it's like our natural tendencies uh, and they are um, coming and i'm thinking that why why does that happen is it because of our pra uh, purva janma sanskaras and so yeah there are two there are two very in, important aspects that that your example you know explains and you're demonstrating um, and one of them is that yeah you said it comes naturally so what does it mean it comes naturally 
if something comes naturally to one human being, it should come naturally to everybody because they're all human beings. And on yeah. Saturday, when we met for Bhakti Vriksh, it was, um, and you will like the Bhakti Vriksh, at, um, Priyanka Mataji, if you can spare your time on Saturdays for an hour or so and come and join the Bhakti Vriksh. Because we talked there about species of life. And we said human beings, the science will just have one species, right? For human beings, there's only one species, mm -hmm. human beings, right? right? right. But if you lo look at our way of defining the species, there are 8,400,000 species of life out, out of which 400,000 species of human beings are there. Oh. So, so they redefine the human beings as their consciousness. Those are 400,000 oh. different in the consciousness. So there's a devta, there are this and that, like that, you know, in those mm. categories. So... Um, so when we talk about, when we say that it's a natural tendency, it is coming because of the consciousness that you have developed over a period of life, many lifetimes. So you have been doing a personal devotional service in the past. So you are you going to continue from there, right? And this also explains the verse from Bhagavad Gita that whatever you have done, if you are not successful and you came back again into this material world, you will start off from that same level, no matter what. They put you in a, in our uh, impersonal family, but still doesn't matter to you. And that is why God in all his wisdom has hidden what is going on in your head. Because if in your head you're going like, I like Krishna in the form, your mom is not going to like it, right? If she can read your mind. Yeah. I mean, she, right? she, doesn't, uh, she doesn't say, but we both when discuss, she says that the way you see, um, I, I am not able to. See. And same way, I mean, yeah, so yeah. I mean. And that is why, you know, knowledge is important because you're, you're knowing, now you know. Like two people can just fight till death about whether God has got a form or not. But, but uh, when you look at the Shastras and you specifically that verse, Vadanti Vidas, that those who have seen the truth, those who have seen the truth are telling us that God comes in three. There are three aspects of God, Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagwan, like that, right? So they are, yeah, so, so when, Mataji, I still find myself, I feel that like, you know, I still, um, I think I'm, I'm still somewhere struggling because I don't um, feel bad for her. I haven't. Like, Absolutely. There's no need. That's what I'm saying. I feel That's that she's also going to meet God and yes, but in her own form. Absolutely. She will meet God and, and not in her own form because she's not concentrating on God with a form. So right, she'll, right. she'll go to the, yeah, she'll go to the FLG, right. that philosophy, is whatever, but so, um, but having you as the daughter, right? If you bump up your devotional service a lot, you remember what do they say? 22 generations this side. And right, right. Side. So that's why, I mean, I, I just feel that I pray. I just Absolutely. pray for her. And, there's no point in, argu in arguing. And then also there's no point in, in thinking that she's wrong because she's not wrong. Yeah. Uh, Bhagavatam, first canto, second chapter, verse number 11 is telling you that she's not wrong. That's an aspect of the God. Sun, the sun planet, the sun disk and the sunshine. So she's just looking at the sunshine, right? Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, she's looking at transcendental sunshine, right? So that's what I'm saying, that people can fight to death over, over that you are wrong and you are wrong, but both of them are right. Like mm -hmm. it's like the six blind men and the elephant story, right? One catches the tail and he says that he looks like a rope. One, one touches the side of the body and says, no, elephant looks like a wall. Mm -hmm. somebody touches the trunk and he says you know it's something else like that so similarly when you're looking at God people will see different aspects of it but now we know with philosophy that what happens with this aspect and what happens with that aspect of it right in the end mm -hmm. and then second thing that, that that's a second point that your your thing your <clears throat> example brings up which is very much in support of the verse that we are doing today where it is saying that never was a time that you existed and I did not exist. And of course, Krishna is talking about the soul, right? So you see that, that we are born in a family and we say this is the mother and this is the father. And, you know, because I was born in the family of a human being, so I'm a human being like that. Um, but the thing to remember is that that's about all that, you know, we use our parents as a conduit to come into this world. And then, of course, the parents take care of us and will give us some environment to pursue our material as well as um, devotional activities. But nevertheless, you see that the influence of the parent is not on, the influence of the parent is on the body. In the sense that if the parent is a dog, especially in Kali Yuga, if the parent is a dog, then the child will be a dog. If the parent is a cat, then the child will be a cat. If the parent is a human being, the child will be a human being. To that extent, your mother has a control on you, right? But beyond that, no control over your consciousness. 
no control at all. On to that extent, you are on your own. What they can do is, you know, even give you the ambience and give you the atmosphere to move, you know, to to progress in whatever path that they are providing to you. But wherever you left in your previous life, that predominates. So despite the fact that your mom is an impersonalist, still you are saying, no, I'm going to go to the personalist path because that is your consciousness. And that is why what distinguishes between you and your mom is the consciousness. Although from the scientific perspective, you both are homo sapiens. You both are human beings like that, right? So you see how our shastras are so much more powerful <laughs> and so deep they go and coming up with 400,000 species <laughs> of human beings. So what are the variegated consciousnesses you can get like that? Hare Krishna, Ma. Hare Krishna. I was reminded of this verse that's going to come on later on in Bhagavad Gita that Krishna says that, uh, and actually Vaishishika Shri Prabhu mentioned in one of his recent calls, uh, classes, is that, uh, you know, uh, we are manifested beings, so it is easier for us to uh, form a relationship with, uh, with the manifested form, and that path is easier than the other path which is very difficult and that's why because um it's uh, devotees it's so much easier to be attached to krishna is because we see that beautiful tribhanga form and we just can't keep take our eyes off we we miss the deities because we can't go to the temple so i was just reminded of this word. exactly yeah and this is the, the question that that you asked um uh, the priyanka mataji asked <clears throat> is a question that everybody asks and that's why Arjuna asks that question of for our benefit in the 12th chapter of Bhagavad Gita which is titled devotional service so that he he just says uh, he starts with you know um tesham satata yukta nam bhajatam priti purvakam oh not this one no what's the verse number one from Bhagavad Gita Arjuna vacha evam satata yukta ye bhakta swam parupasate ye chapi aksharam avyaktam tesham ke yogutamaha so he's saying that you tell me that between those who worship the impersonalist and those who worship your form, which is better? How much more clear can the question be? <laughs> Outrank is asking. And then Sri Bhagavan Uvacha, Maya Veshu Manoye Maam Nitya Yukta Upasate Shaddaya Pariyopetas Teme Yukta Tama Mata. So he says that, you know, according to me, <laughs> those who worship me are the best. Case closed. Now look at Maya. The Ramayavadi goes and reads the same Bhagavad Gita. You go to Art of Living, they're reading the same Bhagavad Gita, but they are telling you, so am, so am, you are God. How can you get that? How can you infer from this Sanskrit? <laughs> How can you infer that? He asked a question, point blank, you got the answer. Right? But then Krishna con continues on in third verse and he says, Ye tva aksharam anirdesham avyaktam parupasate cha kutastam achilam dhruvam so he said, but those who worship my unmanifested, indefined, immovable form, right? Right? Parupasate, Shaddaya Paryopetas, Teme Yuktamamata. So the verdict. But then Yetu Aksharam Anirdesham Avyaktam Parupasate Sarvatragam Achintyamcha Kutastam Achilandravam. So those who are worshipping the impersonal, but what do they do? Sanniyam ye indriya gramam. They also will control indriya gramam, all your senses. They also try to control their senses. Sanniyam ye indriya gramam, sarvatra sambuddhaya. They also see everybody equally. Why? Because everybody is a soul. Right? So the impersonals also see everybody as a soul. They have a distinction between soul and the, and the Lord, but the Lord doesn't have a form. Right? So sanniyam ye indriya gramam, sarvatra sambuddhaya. Te prapnu vanti mameva. So here's the verse for you, Priyanka Mataji. Te prapnu vanti mameva. They will also get me, find me. They will also achieve me. Right? Prapnu vanti mameva. Sarva bhuta hite rataha. While they are engaged in doing welfare activities for all others, these people who concentrate on my impersonal form also come to me. And then there comes the verse, Priti Radhika, that you were quote, quoting where Krishna says, Klesho adhik taras te sham. Avyakt asakta chetasam. So what he's saying is that klesho, very difficult, distressing, duk dega klesh. Klesho adhik taram, adhik, very difficult. Klesho adhik tarak klesham avyakt asakta chetasam. If your mind is 
asakta is attached to the impersonal form of the Lord. It's very difficult. For whom? Kleshu adhik tarakdesham avyakt asakta chetam. Avyakta hi gatir dukham. If you're focusing on avyakta, it is gatir dukham. Your goal and your result will be dukh only. In the end, you're going to get dukh only. Avyakta hi gatir dukham. Deha vadbhir avapsati means that those who are embodied beings, for them to concentrate on the impersonal form of the God, Lord is only going to give you grief. And it's very difficult to concentrate. Because if you close your eyes, what are you going to concentrate on? Like that. So, impersonalist, personless, Aka, Nigur, Sagur, and Nirgur, and Mayavadi. These five, five things we should keep in mind. And be aware of the distinctions and aware of the frailties of placing our devotional service into impersonalism, worse still into Mayavad. Best is that I am Das, Das, Dasani, Das. I'm the servant of the servant of the servant of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Matele. I just want to clarify a little. Uh, so, Mataji, Sakar is which does not have a form. No. A sakar. So you have a form, sorry. You yeah. have a form. Yeah. Nirakar, he doesn't have a form. Mm. But God has a form, but it is uh, superior. I mean, it is not like our form, right? Mm. And then mm. Sagun and Nirgun. Uh, you said Sagun, uh, we are Saguna. Means uh, tied with material. Uh, Embodied being is Saguna. Because he has got, yeah, because he has got a body which is material, right? Yes, Mataji. And Nirguna doesn't have material qualities. Qualities, right. Because like Krishna, if you look at Krishna, he doesn't have any material uh -huh. qualities. Although you see a body of Krishna, right? You Krishna has got eyes, uh -huh. right? If you look, look uh -huh. at the picture of Krishna, he's got so many things, right? Nose, lips, yeah. hands. Yeah. But they are Nirguna. They are not made of material. They are all spiritual. Thank you, Mathilde. So, gun means material qualities. Qualities. So, yes. sa and ni means uh, with, the, with, with the guna. Yeah, guna is material. Yeah. So, guna, nirguna. Akar, nirakar. Right? So then in the ninth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna will say, Avajananti Mamura, Manoshim Tanumashrita, Param Bhava Majananto, Mama Bhuta Maheshwaram. So he says, Avajananti Mamura. Mura means like very foolish. <laughs> so he says that the foolish people do not know me. And Manoshim Tanum Ashrita, they think that I have got a human body. I do not know. They are, they are fools. Param Bhavam Ajananto, they do not know my superior nature. That although this might appear to be like this body, like a human body, but they, I am actually made of spiritual content. I'm speaking. Yeah, uh, yes, Mother, because uh, uh, in the battlefield, he was 120 years old, but he was still looking like a young man. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Evidence. Parshana Mataji produced evidence <laughs> in support of that, yeah. <coughs> So are we good on that? Yes or yes, no? Yes, Mother. <laughs> yes. Good. Yes, Mother. So should we call it a day? It's 8.13 now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a fantastic day. Today in the evening at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, which will be 10 p.m. for Sutta 5. She's still here. I'll be giving a talk at, to the Modesto congregation here on um, uh, stages of devotional service. And it's the call that got postponed from the you know, few weeks ago, so it's happening now. If you're interested, then just post on the San Mateo Bhakti Breaks group, WhatsApp group, and I'll pass on. Because they use a different Zoom call. They have their own Zoom. Not very elegant. And they have uh, What is the time, Mother? Time? 7 p.m. my time. It'll be 7.30 a.m. your time. 
exactly so so we have we, have, <clears throat> we are so good at making plans and we are admired for making plans and there are project planning classes and project manager are paid good salary and we have program manager even more <laughs> right and we do all that and then suddenly krishna's plan comes and hit us hits us like you know steve job was hit by krishna's plan it's right, right. Of eyes, yeah. right? Yeah. all your plans yeah. thrown out of the of the door right mm-hmm. and then uh, and so it's very easy for people also to think that there is no god atheist mm-hmm. Where is the God? Show me where is God. There is no God. Prabhupada says, you have eyes to see him. You have to eyes to see him. Hmm? And that's why he gave Arjuna the, you see, uh, the, the, the sight. Yeah. Devya Jyoti. Devya um, Drishti. sight. Yeah. Yeah. Drishti. You have to first develop the eyes to be able to see God. And, yeah. <clears throat> and that's why Vaisheshika uh, uh, <clears throat> Prabhupada Aksa quotes that, that there are no atheists in foxholes. No what is it? There are no atheists in foxholes. So what does that mean? 
<clears throat> what is a foxhole? The army where they fight. And yeah. It is continuous bombardment of bomb. Yeah. So what happens is that that um, a, a foxhole is a hole in which a fox will live. Like foxes build, uh, dig holes and yeah. then there, right? But in the army, like as Garima uh, Mati is pointing out, in the army, you know, they they dig these. They also dig holes in which they will hide. The soldiers will hide when there is bombs yeah. falling down like that. Yeah. So yeah. when you are so near death that a bomb is fallen, and your husband can tell you that, Mataji. I, I have I have seen Mataji. I went and. Uh, and uh, saw the border of uh, Pakistan and India. Mm. I got the fortune. I wanted to see it when Leh Ladakh. I went there yes. and uh, they had uh, made a way to go. <coughs> they had dug it and go. Um, and go. and uh, Pakistanis, uh, they had uh, seen. The, in between the river is Sindhu Nadi. And uh, uh, on the side, they saw our vehicle turning that they could see. And uh, immediately they started bombarding. Uh, from over our heads, the bullets were going. Yeah. And we were in the, uh, there's a drench. We were inside mm -hmm. that. And uh, they so told us to lie down there. Don't move yeah. at all. Right, right, yeah. right. So yeah. what it, yeah. So when they say that there's no, it is in the foxhole, what it means is that, that when you're faced with death, you might be an atheist the whole life, but when you're faced with death, you really pray to God. And you start yes. to to a higher power, like so you would have. Yeah. So um, I I still remember there was this huge news that hit, um, and this was a few years ago that in the in the zoo in Delhi, they had brought a white tiger, I think white tiger or something or some tiger or lion, something like that. And so obviously they build a tall cage, right? And then was there was a young boy, you know, high teens. And he wanted to take a picture, a nice picture of the of the lion. And so he instead of now, if you want to take a picture and there's a cage in front of you, then all the lines will come in the picture, right? The cage. So he what he did was he wanted to have a better shot. So he climbed this cage. He climbed over the cage and from the top he was taking the pictures. He got so excited that he fell inside. And there was a lion inside. And then of course, you know, the whole TV crew was there, everything etc. was there. And the lion in the beginning was not bothered, you know, he just thought something has dropped. And then the whole crowd came and the crowd started shouting. And, they, and the crowd just didn't know what to do because that cage is so tall. It's like 30 feet tall because that, it's taller than how high that animal can jump. I think it's more than 30 feet. So it's there and this man has, this boy has fallen inside and, there was, and then that tiger got, you know, started walking towards this man and there was people filming it on video. And so the tiger is walking to this man and this man was from a religious background but doesn't believe in idol worship and things like that. He was standing like this in front of the lion. You know? This is what death is. There are no atheists in foxholes. So it's better yes. to learn Very about nice. God. That time it's better to learn here. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yiko Bahuna, Yodatati Kama. There is only one God. Okay. Have a fantastic, fantastic day. Keep Krishna in your mind and remember the small goals that you had put for yourself. Yes, Mother. Yes, I remember. Okay. Panchi Kalpa Trubias Chakri Pasting Dubia Vicha Patita Nam Pam Yo Vaishnavi Yo Namunamaha Go Primanande Hari Hari Go. All right. So. It will be a simple goodbye today because <laughs> we missed all our devotee association on Facebook, those who watch it on Facebook, but uh, I will post. It will take me several hours before I'll be able to process this and post it on Facebook, but I will. Okay. Have a fantastic, fantastic day. Stay in Krishna consciousness, everybody. Hare Krishna.